Hi again and welcome to uh, this month's edition of Cook the Book. This is Valerie and I'm Tina. We're happy to have you with us. If you found this video, we have lots of other Cook the Book videos on YouTube and um, through the uh, Center for Public Library uh, site. Lots of instructional videos on our YouTube and so we hope you click around and maybe watch this one and maybe a few others too. Um, Cook the Book is where we take inspiration from a fiction book to then find a recipe that was inspired by that fiction book and let you know how to make it and make it for you. Um, so today our fiction book is a fairly new release, Hotel Laguna by Nicola Harrison. She has written several other books, including The Showgirl and Montauk. Um, this book is historical fiction. It starts with um, the main character, Hazel, moving from the Midwest to California um, in about 1942. She wants to help with the war effort. She wants to get a job in a factory to help while the men are abroad fighting the war. Um, so she gets a job at Douglas Aircraft. She was one of the Rosie Riveters, which I'm sure you're familiar with, have seen the pictures of. She was one of those people that was trained and did a lot of work for them. Um, so the book starts out like that, but it moves fairly quickly on to the war has ended. The men are returning home from war and taking back those factory jobs. So the women are all out of jobs. They're all kind of expected to go back to wherever they came from and resume their wife and mother duties. She doesn't want to do that. She's single. She decides she's going to stay in California and ends up in the beach town of Laguna Beach which is a real place if you've ever been there. It's beautiful. If you've not been there, Google it. You'll see how beautiful it is. Um, she ends up there. It's a very artsy community. Um, she meets a local bartender. They befriend each other and she decides she needs to have a job so she can afford to live there. Um, so she responds to kind of a vague ad and it's to be the assistant to a very cantankerous artist in the community that people love his artwork but don't necessarily love him. So she becomes his assistant and they really develop really a unique, wonderful friendship and um, she decides she just wants to stay on in Laguna Beach. So really her leaving her factory job is the very, very first chapter or so of the book and most of the book is her life in Laguna Beach and what all she encounters. Um, the book has got some wonderful reviews. If you would like to look them up, let me read for you just a couple things that people have said about this book. Um, that it is the most bingeable historic fiction novel they have ever read. That it's about a woman who finds her bliss building planes while the men are out fighting and then must reconfigure her identity when the jobs disappear, just as many others have to reconfigure their identities throughout their life. And this is a journey of discovery set in a magical place. And I like this last one. With a strong story which includes mystery, long lost love, lessons in regret, with a focus on a strong woman who craves freedom during an era that's, that seemed impossible, it was certainly a cannot put down read. So this is a wonderful book. Um, if you like reading books about beach towns, if you like historical fictions, if you like strong women characters, if you like a book that includes a a, a friendship, a love, um, a person finding themselves, this may be a great book for you. So this kind of gave us the retro vibe, okay? So you may have seen this person on Instagram, YouTube. Um, he's been all over the internet. He's someone that during the COVID shutdown, he decided to start baking. He's always loved that. And he decided to start baking old timey recipes. So his book just recently came out. This is B. Dylan Hollis's Baking Yesteryear. There he is on the front. He is so fun to watch. Even if you don't plan on making anything, you should look up his Instagram account or his YouTube because he's just so fun to watch. So we have old timey recipes like hot cross buns, date macaroons. How about this one, chocolate mayonnaise cake. Probably a lot of these things, maybe your grandmother made. A lot, as Valerie and I were looking through it, a lot um, reminded us of things that our mother or grandmother used to make. I also like how he has his favorites from each decade, starting with the 1900s and up with each decade, his favorite recipe that he's done from each decade. So it is a really fun book, lots of great pictures. 
and Valerie picked out of that book to make mock apple pie, which we were talking, we think a lot of people have heard of, but you're like, I've heard of it, I don't know what it is. So Valerie's gonna tell us about it, a little bit about it, and how to make it. I've just always been intrigued with this. Um, as we were talking yesterday, I had it at a potluck one time, and then later that day, the person had said it was a mock apple pie, mm -hmm. and we were kind of like, well, what's that? And they were like, well, there's no apples in it, and we were like, what? <laughs> you know, because it tasted like it. It uh -huh. did. It did. So it's always kind of intrigued me. I'd never made one before. So I just thought this would be fun uh -huh. to do. Um, and if you want something easy to do, a lot of this stuff you might already have on hand mm -hmm. at home. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then also, you know, it's made with Ritz crackers. So I don't know if you don't like Ritz crackers. Exactly. <laughs> really They're delicious. Tasty. Plain or so, in a pie. They're delicious. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, some of the steps to this, I mean, the first step in this is you're going to put um, two cups of sugar, two cups of water, and three teaspoons of cream of tartar in a pan. And what I did first was mix the um, sugar and the cream of tartar and then added the water. Um, and then you just boil it over high for 20 minutes to make a syrup, which is what this is. And then when you're done, um, you use a fresh squeezed lemon. Um, and put the juice in there and just let it cool for a bit. Um, so in this case, I just got prepared pie shells mm -hmm. because it just seems like it was easier. Mm -hmm. um, you can make your own, have a favorite mm -hmm. recipe, you can try one, mm -hmm. um, but this just seemed the easiest way to mm -hmm. go. So if you want something easy, you can just get it, you know, a pre-made mm -hmm. one. Um, so basically all you do after you make the syrup is you're just gonna take, um, it's 40 Ritz crackers crushed. In some of them, in the recipe, it said to just, you might want some bigger chunks along with the more crushed up mm -hmm. ones. So then you just put it in your pie shell. And just make sure it's spread evenly in your pie shell. So, and then you take a teaspoon. So the teaspoon of cinnamon, I had apple pie spice, so I thought that would be fitting. Mm -hmm. So it's just one teaspoon and it just says to sprinkle it over the top. So just sprinkle it over the top of the crushed up crackers. I kind of, not very good at evenly sprinkling sometimes. <laughs> so I just kind of like stirred it around just a little bit. All right. All right, so then you have your syrup that you've made up. Um, which actually is really easy to do. The only thing I would suggest about the syrup is in my, I used like a medium sized saucepan. Um, and since you boil it on high, it kind of splatters a little. So oh. there's like sugar all over my oh, stove boy. top. <laughs> and that's sometimes hard to clean up. It is. If you wait too long, if you don't get yes. it right away. Um, yeah. So I just put a splatter screen over it. And um, so when I did this for this, mm -hmm. it was fine. Mm -hmm. So, but be sure to wash your splatter screen right away, right away otherwise you'll have sugar stuck to that. Yes, yes. And do you have to let it cool? Um, it says let it cool some. Okay. So, I mean, you can kind of, this was just made oh, a little bit yeah. ago, and uh -huh. I would say, I mean, it's still pretty warm. Uh -huh. um, sugary things don't, in mass, don't mm -hmm. tend to cool mm -hmm. too quickly. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you just pour it over the top. And if I remember right, I think you said like this came about, this recipe came about in the 30s. Yeah, it's he does a great description of this because we were kind of curious um, the background. And uh, so I love, like, I liked his whole book. It, it likes the fact that like the recipes a lot of them do have a background on it. Um, so that was really helpful in this case. But yeah, this was in the 30s. I think it's in 1934 um, is when it really came about. They said there were some earlier recipes. Um, but it was kind of made, I think, with saltines. Um, oh, and dried bread. So oh. it wasn't kind. It wasn't quite yeah. the same as mm -hmm. this. Um, so what they well, 1934 was when Ritz crackers came out. So um, according to his little history, it said that it, it was also at the same time that um, because of the depression, that apples were sky high in price. So. Um, they just came up with this. That's so clever. And, and it was so cool. And that Ritz really embraced it and ended up putting the recipe for this on their box of crackers. Yeah. Which, so that was a win for them. I'm sure mm -hmm. they sold a lot of crackers because of that. Oh, yeah. Just kind of, just like, 
Oh, just a bit. Trying to moisten all the bits. Yeah. Yeah. And mine, when I did it last night, because most likely you're, well, what I did is I let the syrup cool about 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I had other stuff to do, so it worked out perfectly. Uh -huh. And it was just the right temperature. Um, and it poured over, so it wasn't quite maybe as thick as this. Mm -hmm. So probably if you pour it over a little sooner, it's mm -hmm. not gonna thicken up. So, but, all right, so do that. Um, and then you just do three tablespoons of butter over the top. It said just little slices of cold butter. Because butter makes everything better. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so just do that. This is a really incredibly easy recipe. It really is. And it's just, I don't know. So if you want like something impressive and or you just want something for dessert. Uh -huh. And like I said, most of the stuff you'll have on hand, even if you have to make a pie crust, it, pie crusts are pretty simple. It's just usually flour, really cold butter, some water. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, they're all over the internet. Mm -hmm. They're probably in cookbooks that you may have. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be really simple just to make up a mm -hmm. um, pie crust recipe. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember, did he have a pie crust recipe in He here? does, okay. he references it, okay. um, I think. Yeah, page, on his book it says page 24. Okay. So, um, my butter's sliding away from me. <laughs> okay, so that's about three tablespoons. It just said thin, little thin pots of butter there. So okay, so once that's done, then I have my other, also pre-made pie crust. Um, and what I did before, this is kind of moist enough. Mm -hmm. um, I just moistened the edges mm -hmm. just to make sure that it would stick well. So I just put it on um, and then you just take a fork or whatever you'd like, you can crimp it with a knife. Just crimp the edges. And because of the apple pie spice, it really smells like apple pie. It does, <laughs> well, that's what I thought. And uh -huh. the lemon with it too, uh -huh. like it's so interesting yes. how just those two things alone can make you think apple pie and you don't even need an apple. <laughs> right, and like, if you don't have apple pie spice, the cinnamon works and the cinnamon would give you that same kind of smell. Yes. And you're right, other than maybe the prepared pie crust or what you needed to make the pie crust, you probably have everything at home. Yeah, because it's just sugar, water. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might not have a lemon, but you could probably just use lemon bottled lemon, lemon juice. juice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always try to keep that on hand. Uh huh. Um, but honestly, this is such an easy recipe mm -hmm. to do. So then when you're done with this, um, you preheat your oven to, well, when you're putting your pie together, preheat your oven to um, 425 degrees, and then you cook it for 10 minutes at 425. Um, and I put, I have a little pie baking pan I put under mm -hmm. it, um, just in case it mm -hmm. flowed over. It didn't. It didn't dribble? Mm -mm, not at all. So, um, yeah, and then after uh, 10 minutes, you mm -hmm. go and you turn your oven down to 350 and bake it for 20 to 25 more minutes. Mm -hmm. And it turned out perfectly. <laughs> I was so excited. Yes. And so if, you want to really get old, if you want to really get old timey, take your scraps of pie dough, roll it in, maybe some butter and cinnamon mm -hmm. sugar or apple pie spice, snip it up, bake that for a little bit. though. It's good too. It is. My daughter took the leftover pie crust last night and we saved it until today. So... Uh -huh. I end up doing that uh -huh. with these because she loves when yes, we do that. Yes. So so delicious. Um, and do we need to, do you mark, mark it in We do. Or? So um, also on top of it, just an egg wash. So he mm -hmm. says one large egg and uh, two tablespoons of butter. Or butter, two tablespoons of water. Okay. I mean, it's supposed to come up. Well, <laughs> well, why why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So just do that. And then it will be all ready to go in the oven. Um, I usually put a couple little slits in it. Okay. Just to let the steam mm -hmm. out. So. And you can do really cool things with the little slits in the pies too. Mm -hmm. um, some people use cookie cutters. You can put little apples uh -huh. or whatever you yes. want. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So we'll just do a little slits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. 
So, all right, and well, that's it. Yes, and this is a really great fall recipe, and if you're watching this as it comes out, our video, it's fall right now, so this would be an awesome fall recipe, but really, a really fun thing if you were having people over, yeah. and kind of, now I'm going to say trick them, not that you really want to trick them, but just something interesting as a conversation piece to make mm -hmm. and eat and talk about, and um, maybe some of them have memories of their grandma making it or yeah. something like that, so that might be super fun too. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining us again. Um, we'll hope you will be interested in either one of these books, either picking them up at our library or through Libby, or if you want to purchase your own through Amazon or a local bookseller. Um, and we'll see you next time on our next Cook the Book.